surprising style lessons I learned from my mom. For the past few months, I've been thinking about my mom a lot. And she's been gone now, oh gosh, not quite 10 years, but, but close enough. And I still get very, very sad that I don't have my mom. But the reason that I've been thinking about her a lot, and I will get into the style lessons that I learned about her because that's what started all of this, but I'm going to share. So I have a brand new channel and that is called Message From Mom. And I launched a podcast and I'm joined by my daughters-in-law, Chelsea and Kelly. And we are just entertaining topics that they just want to pick my brain as their mom, you know, their, as their mother-in-law. And we just launch into these different discussions. And we've already talked about romance, time alone in a marriage. So if you are interested in that, I'm going to link everything uh, down below. So it's called Message from Mom, completely different. There's no style. There is no fashion other than, you know, what we're wearing in the podcast. But what a lot of fun. And it's just been such a great joy to start this endeavor with my daughters-in-law. But as I said, so launching that, it just made me start thinking about my mom and what a great relationship we had. I was the only daughter. So I had two brothers. I was smack dab in the middle. And my mom and I just had a great relationship almost all my life. I mean, of course, you have those challenging years in your teen years, you know, where you need to pull away from your mom and, you know, create your own identity. But honestly, she was my biggest cheerleader. She was my biggest fan, of course, wiped away my tears on more than one occasion as a child, as a teenager, as a young woman. So today I just thought I would just, you know, go down memory lane a little bit and just share some things about my mom. And honestly, she was my first fashion icon. Such a huge impact when it came to clothes and the importance of clothes and her love of clothes. So, and as a child, we never fully appreciate the wealth of, the, you know, the knowledge that our moms possess. But my mom, I mean, she was such a beautiful woman and she's on the thumbnail and we'll float a photo in too, but what a striking woman and just a, a, just a kind heart too. Really, really fun. But her beauty, her style lessons and her love of fashion honestly shaped me in ways I never imagined. And as I said, she was my first style icon and she regularly dispensed with sage wisdom, not only with fashion, but also with boys. And she loved movies. She always knew every little detail about any of the movies that we would watch on late night TV. And she also loved college football. She grew up in a university town and she loved the Iowa Hawkeyes uh, you know, to the day she died. So I couldn't help but stroll down memory lane today, remembering what a beautiful woman she was and how she loved beautiful clothes. Not necessarily expensive brands, but well-made, high quality clothing. And she taught me to appreciate the details. I also learned to be patient and meticulous while shopping as you never know what you might find in the sale pile. And she was the absolute best. I can remember going to like TJ Maxx with her and she'd just be click, click, clicking through every single item in the store. I mean, sometimes I would even get exhausted, but, but when you are patient like that, you can score a great deal like a Stella McCartney dress by just combing through a sale rack, maybe for an hour. But that Stella McCartney dress might be a hundred dollars. And while my crew didn't include girls, yes, I have three boys, three sons to share fashion tips with, I still dole out sage advice about skincare, just like my mom, because men need self-care as much as women do, right? And my husband was always really good. He had a great skincare routine in place. That's why I'm excited to have Tej Hanley Uncomplicated Skincare for Men as a sponsor of today's video. Tej Hanley simplifies the process of taking care of your skin. They provide you with all the products you need and nothing you don't because men like an easy peasy system in place. And I recommend you start with their level one system, which has all the basics, a daily face wash, an exfoliating scrub, an AM moisturizer with SPF 20. Yep, men need that too. And a PM moisturizer. Oh, and to make it super easy, they provide this instruction card in every box that tells you when to use each product, 
how much to use and in what order. It definitely comes in handy. And because, you know, sometimes men, they haven't had a skincare routine in place and this really is going to, I mean, and they like to, you know, they, they don't want to waste any time. So they just need things to be, as I said, easy peasy. And Teach Hanley helps you with that. But you don't have to just take my word for it because they have over 7,000 five-star reviews from customers around the globe. This isn't something you want to put off because prevention is key. We women know we need to get ahead of any signs of aging now. Your future self will thank you. So we want that for the fellas in our life too. And because Tiege is sponsoring this video, they're offering you an amazing deal. Just click the first link in the description box to get 30% off your first skincare system and a free gift. Plus, as a member, you'll also get 20% off for life. By the way, both gifts that you're choosing from are a $20 value and complete game changers. One is a silicone body scrubber or a nail and face grooming kit. And personally, I prefer the nail and face grooming kit because my kiddos can throw it into their DOP kit and always be prepared. So don't wait any longer. Click the first link in the description box to start your favorite man on skincare. They're gonna thank you for it. More importantly though, my mom taught me that dressing well and looking one's best is important, not frivolous. It tells the world you respect them and that you have respect for yourself. And I think that's really, and I think we've kind of gotten away from that. And we've really forgotten about that. But I just know when I'm standing in the grocery store line and I'm looking put together, I feel like I'm giving a gift to everybody else around me as well as to myself. But back to my mom, because she loved cashmere and pearls and she dressed her only daughter, me, in Bobby socks and Mary Jane's. As a young girl, I would rustle through a dresser drawers filled with kid skin gloves various lengths. I love that. That was just an, an era that's gone by. But every year when I was growing up, like clockwork, she looked forward to our back to school shopping sprees that usually happened in August because we always went to school right after Labor Day. And she would steer me towards the suede skirts and mohair turtlenecks and definitely turn me away from the overalls or blue jeans when they came into fashion. And we always stop for lunch and we always indulge in the chocolate Coke, which is one of her favorite things. It's a soda drink. You actually just put Hershey's chocolate or whatever into it, but it, 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 I'm telling you, it's delicious. And all of our back to school shopping sprees ended with that. And I just also remember too, sailor suits were the norm for me through grade school as were sleeveless dresses. And it wasn't until junior high that the dress code relaxed a bit and we could wear pants to school. Then, a few years later, jeans came into vogue. And I still have vivid memories of outfits that she wore. And I remember a favorite skirt of hers. It was black and white windowpane pattern that she wore all summer long, showing off her tan legs because boy, could she get a tan. I did not get her beautiful, uh, darker skin. They, they call it a black Irish because we have a lot of Irish in our lineage. Uh, I'm the fair type that needs to be you know under cloud cover but she just tanned beautifully and that skirt really did showcase her beautiful long tan legs and I also remember through the 60s I watched her hemline inch up then fall back down when the midi and maxi returned with a vengeance in the 70s I think her favorite fabrics were velvet lace and silk and she was quite the seamstress because for my first school dance she whipped up the most scrumptious black velvet dress with an oversized lace collar that I thought was absolutely dreamy. I mean, honestly, I thought I was the best person at the dance. And I, and I love it because my mom grew up in an era that favored hats and she wore them regularly, especially on Sunday when it was time to head to church or when it was time to take a Sunday drive in my dad's convertible. And I also had a special hat for the convertible rides. And I, I, it was a big straw one, had a ribbon around it or a sash and then she, she would you know, tie it underneath my chin. But we were always prepared for those convertible rides. And even when the tradition of wearing hats began to wane, she remained steadfast in her love of hats and she wore one to my wedding. And in her eyes, living rooms, fine china, and guest soap were reserved for guests. For years, I teased her that the guest soap would have to be buried with her because they definitely outnumbered the guests six to one. 
She was also the oldest of three girls, and whenever the sisters gathered together, they would reminisce of years gone by. They, you know, they would just talk about their childhood and their teen years. And one of the things that always struck me was that their stories always included vivid descriptions of the outfits they wore whenever the memory that they were conjuring up, whatever it was, the outfit and every detail of that outfit was also shared. And that just really, really struck me. And they also shared the local stores where they were purchased. And my mom also loved to share her skincare routines and makeup tips with me. And when she visited as a young mom, we regularly trotted off to the mall for a shopping spree. And since she firmly believed in ladies who lunch, there was always a stop at a local cafe. But as a young woman, we traded in those chocolate Cokes for a glass of wine. And that was just always so fun. And my mom has always emphasized the importance of self-care. Through her example, I learned that taking care of myself is not selfish, but rather a necessary component of being able to show up fully for others. By recognizing the value of self-care, I cultivated a greater sense of balance and harmony. It's a skill I am grateful to have learned from my mom and one that continues to serve me well in both my personal and professional life. So what are the five style lessons I learned from my mom? These lessons stick with me today. Not one tip is groundbreaking news, but it's good advice all the same. And if you've made it this far in the video, you might as well hit the subscription box down below and the notification bell. And there are three things you can do to help my channel grow. Like, share, and comment. Style lesson number one, never leave the house without lipstick. My mom was so meticulous about always having at least her lipstick on, and then she would take a Kleenex and then blot it so it wasn't like overpowering. But that woman always had her lipstick on when she left the house. And then she would reapply it during the day. So I also learned that too. And even if I've gone very au naturel with my makeup, I always have lipstick on. Style tip number two, never feel guilty about purchasing investment pieces like cashmere sweaters. And that was a very, very big lesson. And my dad, and I think I've shared this with you too before because my dad, he was an investment banker and he came along and he went, because he, he knew I was gonna be just like my mom and be a, you know, a shopaholic. But he really wanted to instill in me that if I chose an investment piece, maybe that was going to be a, a higher price point. But if I prorated it out over the life of the item, it actually was less expensive. So my mom really lobbed onto that, latched onto that, and she knew that investment pieces were the key to a wardrobe. And style lesson number three, she taught me there's no such thing as too many white blouses. And if you've caught a glimpse of my closet before, you see I have quite a few white blouses. I always tease that I'm always on the hunt for the perfect white blouse, but there are so many different varieties out there. I like to have sleeveless blouses. I like to have short sleeve blouses. I like to have long sleeve, cotton, poplin, silk. I mean, the fabrics are the, such an array of fabrics there, but honestly, a white blouse and a pair of uh, beautiful blue jeans, yeah, instant outfit. So I truly believe there's no such thing as too many white blouses. Thanks mom for teaching me that. And style lesson number four, Simple, beautiful, well-made clothes don't date. And that's also where I just began my love affair for timeless classic clothes. Because there again, you can buy the investment pieces, they're going to actually be a better value in the long run. And then honestly, when you have a classic wardrobe built, you are always going to be looking in vogue because you are timeless. And style lesson number five, it's okay to make a mistake. She was really, really big on that. And she would actually laugh, you know, sometimes at herself, at you know, an outfit that she put together and she just looked like, you know, she was a cat's meow. And then taking a glimpse of that photo a couple years later, and then she would just be like, oh my gosh, you know, what was I thinking? But she always thought that that was an opportunity just to hone in on her style just a little bit more. And she just gave me that freedom that, hey, it's okay if you make a style mistake. It's not the end of the world. It's not neurosurgery. So go ahead, try things, be open, and be okay to make a mistake. 
So it was just so much fun today to reflect on the surprising lessons that I learned from my mom because I'm reminded of the profound impact her wisdom has had on me and her guidance through the years shaped my decisions and actions. So I encourage you to consider the overlooked lessons from your mom and how they can positively influence your life. As we honor the powerful influence of our mothers, let's embrace their teachings and carry them forward with us on our journey. And I'm so blessed to have my daughters-in-law, as I said, I have Kelly, I have Chelsea, and now Tabitha, but Kelly and Chelsea and I are embarking on this wonderful new adventure and it's just so much fun. So it's good to remember the lessons we learn from our mothers because they are the seeds that bloom into our own wisdom. And a big thank you to Tiege Hanley for this sponsored post. And thank you, my lovely subscribers, for supporting the brands that allow me to bring you fresh ideas. It was so much fun today to reminisce about my mom and the influence that she's had in my life. So I hope you loved it too. Of course, give me a thumbs up if you like the video, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye.